As 2017 is drawing to a close, I wanted to look back with our colleagues here on all the advances we've made and share with you some of those exciting new findings and also look ahead to what we'll be doing in the next year. So this year has actually been marked by, I think, a shift in the field broadly. We can actually create what are called little organoids. Yeah, so an organoid is a self-organized three-dimensional structure. That's a collection of cells that resembles an organ. So there are two main ways we're excited about using organoids. One is to make little tissue parts from patients and then use those to screen for drugs that would slow degeneration. That's most applicable in the area of, let's say, brain disease. The other is to actually make usable parts which we would transplant into a person. So think of that for maybe the kidney or the intestine. We still use some animal models, mice, little zebrafish, a not so commonly known salamander called an axolotl, which can regenerate its body parts, but we're looking to apply this to human conditions. So brain organoids really have been around for a very short time, but it's a fast moving field and I would say it's a new area of uh, neurobiology that did not exist that uh, is enabled by this merge of stem cell biology and neurobiology and technology in very unique ways. So looking at brain organoids and their potential application to understand and eventually treat diseases, I think maybe a major example here could be that of neuropsychiatric diseases, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, to a certain extent autism spectrum disorder. So these are diseases that uh, affect some of the most human abilities that we have. They're really uniquely human, if you think, if you think about it. It's very, very hard to model these diseases in an animal model. So we could use organoids to understand how a certain genetic background control the making and the function of the brain, as well as use the organoids to, for, as a cellular platform for screening for new drugs that can ameliorate those defects. And that's very exciting. Innovations often take place in a concentrated area. What's really important about the Harvard Stem Cell Institute is it has scale and scope. So 350 principal investigators, over a thousand scientists who affiliate with the organization. That's a quality that is frankly unmatched anywhere in the world. So I think a really interesting example of the way the community here is able to take advantage of the collaborative nature of the work, where uh, Joe Von Ventry's work with the kidney organoids is now being used by a bioengineer in our community, Jennifer Lewis, where she's an expert in 3D bioprinting. And so she's now using his cells, her bioprinting, to create new ways to look at kidneys and kidney disease. There have been 24 companies founded or co-founded by members of the HSCI community that's extraordinarily important because there are 24 different areas that are getting closer and closer to solving human problems. One of the goals of the Harvard Stem Cell Institute has always been to make products to help people. And we're proud of the fact that numerous biotech companies have grown out of or been spawned by the Institute. In this last year, we've been very excited to start the beginning of that with the Harvard Fibrosis Network. Fibrosis really represents the opposite of regeneration. So instead of fibrosis, we're hoping to be able to tip the balance toward regeneration. Going from a world of treating symptoms to a world of finding cures is unbelievably important, not just for the people, but actually for the entire economy. And its impact is really in the formative stage. But people should not imagine that the need for financing has gone down. In fact, we're at a point of what I call increasing returns to scale. Because of the accumulated knowledge, because of the human capital uh, that's involved, because of the discoveries and the uh, development of tools that can be used across different disease categories, the potential return on investment has never been higher than my personal commitment is to make sure that these scientists have the capital that they need to run experiments that will ultimately transform human health.
if these difficult diseases, difficult processes require transformative science, this is where that science happens. One of the most wonderful things about being a part of the Harvard Stem Cell Institute is the people that are really the heart and soul of it, and the kind of commitment people have to dedicating themselves to help the world be a better place. Um, and it's just so inspiring. It makes such a difference to people working in the trenches to know that people care about the work they do. So we want to thank you again for the tremendous interest and support you've given. You've really made this possible. The Harvard Stem Cell Institute would not exist without the support we've had in our broader community. We look forward to keeping in touch with you through 2018, and we wish you all the best for the holiday season.